Hello everybody and welcome to another Train Sim World 2 news video. Today obviously we're back on the uh, the DTG uh, store I nearly said. The DTG webpage, a uh, place which we've been quite a lot recently. And of course today we're going to be having a look for another article. Yes it has literally taken me nearly 24 hours to actually be bothered to do this video. But you know, we're here. We're here, we're going to be having a look at the scenario planner it seems today. Uh, now, if anybody's watched my reaction video or watched the DTG live stream, you'll know that the, uh, DTG, uh, during the live stream on Thursday evening, they actually showed footage of the scenario planner in action. And today they've done, or, well, yesterday, they've done an article on um, on the scenario planner. So, so we're going to have a look through that. So yeah, Train Simulator 2 scenario planner. We've got a nice picture of the ICE here. Drive what you want, where you want with the Scenario Planner. Yesterday we announced Scenario Planner will be compatible with your preserved collection in Train Sim World 2. Read the article here, we've already read that one obviously. Today we want to give you a closer look at how the Scenario Planner works. Read on for a step-by-step -step setup of the new Scenario Planner using the custom tool. So, step one, name your scenario. Like I said, we've already seen all this kind of information, so we kind of know what's going on, but you know, it'd be, be useful to have a look. So, yeah, once you've... Uh, uh, created it. I'm guessing there'll be a uh, there'll be a thing where you can select it. They actually didn't show us how you actually create the scenario from the start, like where you go to click it and and then go, sort of go from there. So we don't know that bit, but hey, it doesn't really matter. Let's be perfectly honest. But you know, uh, start off by naming a scenario. You can have up to 30 custom scenarios per route. So picking a memorable name or theme will make it easier to find the ones you want to play later. So, yeah, that's obviously... You can put your head code name in there, for example, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, pick start and end points. Again, we've already seen this, but we'll have a look anyway. Uh, so, you uh, want to try non-stop service from end to end of a route? Go ahead. Want to try a specific branch in the middle of the route? Your, the choice is yours. All you need to do is pick where you want to start, what platforms, what path you want to take, and where you want to end. The menus display an easy-to-read map with clear locations as you pick up your destinations from the list. So obviously you click that, uh, you click your start point on the, on here, I clicked it and then it brought up this, but you know, you click your start point on there, uh, I believe you click your end point and then it gives you a list that looks similar to this, except it will only show the singular platforms which you're allowed to start and stop at sort of thing, but you can click on all the stations that you want down the list and you don't have to click on all of them, uh, you can click, you can miss some out, you can uh, select every single station if you want, you can do a completely non-stop service, the choice is yours when it comes to that. So similar to how you'd set up a scenario except you've got a preset route rather than setting the route up entirely on your own in, uh, in the scenario editor like you would in Trendsim 2020. Uh, set up your train, and there's a couple of bits, a screenshot showing how the setup works. Uh, with a start and end point set, next plan out which train you want to take of. We, uh, will you be taking the IC, ICE M3 or start them in a Talent 2? Preserve collection, the selections also expand to include many more options. Once you've picked a train you, and the form, once you've once you've picked your train formation, name your service and select the, select the start time. You can also choose whether this is a passenger service. If ticked, this will mean loading slash unloading is required at each station. So obviously passenger unloading. Uh, so yeah, um, you click on your on the locomotive that you want to drive. Again, you've got the options here for the Talent 2 and the ICE. Uh, because obviously they're using the, um, the new route, the German one. Uh, so you click the train, you click how many cars you want. I think the Talent 2 comes in 4, 8 and maybe 12 formation. This comes in uh, two, uh, one single unit or two unit. And then you name your scenario, your, your service. So you could name this your head code, for example, if you're doing a real-time train scenario, for example. Name, name, the, name the service your head code. Uh, start time, obviously the time you want to stop. Is it your player service? Now, I don't know what happens if you tick that two are your player service. That could be interesting. The other question is... Could you also set up a... You know, if, if, if you've ever played um, Great Western Express, and I know I've done a video on this particular scenario a long time ago, but it basically, in the first scenario on Great Western Express, you've got three one, six, class 166s one, which you can drive, and they both take different lengths of time. So could you potentially have a scenario where you set up where you've got several player services in sort of ready to go, and then you select the one you want, is that something that we could see? I would assume not. But as they give you the option to select a player service on the next one, it kind of makes you wonder. The other question is, what happens if you've got a player service at both ends of the line? Because obviously you can't, 
you, you know, you can't take two player services from entirely different ends of the line. So what are you going to do about that? So who knows? With regards to that, uh, selecting your stops. Yeah, this is what I was saying about before. Okay, so it's not quite in the uh, in the order. You got to select your start, end, train, and then stops. I thought they, I'm sure they did it in the in the uh, the live stream where you selected your stops first, uh, your start, end, and then your stops, and then your train. I thought they did it. Like, oh well. Uh, with the start and end point set, you can now select uh, the stops you want to you want for your player controlled loco. Tick. Hang on. Let me read the start end point set. You can take the train you take control of with your start end point set. Okay. So it's not really clear because I look, I read that and I thought maybe they should have been maybe they're meant to put it in front of this, but it's it's not actually clear. They both start the same way, so there's no real sort of way of telling. So I might have to rewatch the uh, the video. I can't remember how it works. But for now, we'll we'll say you select your train. It just doesn't seem all that logical because you probably know what train you want to drive anyway. So if you're selecting your train, your your stoppers afterwards, it just it, it doesn't sit right with me somehow. Surely you do route train start sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? It, 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 it seems a slightly haphazard method, and I don't know if they intended it like this or not. But anyway, uh, starting endpoint set, you need to select stops you want to, you want your player to control. Like, tick all, pick and choose the stops you want. Do like, for example, we're setting a, a, a all stops high speed service, the IC3M between start point Aachen and the end at Köln. Uh, so they're ticking all the stops, and you'd obviously get your ICE, you'd stop at each station. If you set it up as a non-passenger service, uh, you, all it would ask you to do is stop at the station. So if you click to stop there, uh, it would ask you to pull into the station, but it wouldn't ask you to open the doors or close them or anything. Uh, so you could either do an empty run where you have to stop at several stations along the way for some reason, or you could do a freight run where it stops and sits at a station and then it pulls away sort of thing. You could do something like that. Set up AI trains. Um, the last thing you want to do is add additional services scenario. This involves repeating steps two to four for each train. AI train opens the doors, the same interesting combinations. Uh, and in turn, to sue from thoroughly enjoyable, properly enjoyable traffic. Yeah, we get the idea. Um, I know I know that was... But, you know, here we've set up a westbound DB442 to pass us while we drive. AI service will allow a unique and realistic feel to every scenario you build. And you can have multiple services for each scenario you play. Uh, now, that's also raised a question for me. What about the destination displays? The scrolling destination displays? Because they say that in the service mode and the scenarios, the AI will have correctly scrolling destination displays. If you have a train, if you set up a, a 442, for example, a uh, Talent 2, and uh, you tell it to stop at, I don't know, you, you, you want to go to from Aachen to Köln, and you stop at like three stations. Will the destination uh, be able to work itself out and put just them three stations in? Or will it be blank? Or will it maybe do something else quirky? That's a, that's a good question, I think. Uh, what's going to happen to your destination display of your AI trains? Your player train, I think you can set it up as you like. So I don't know if that means you can set up a route and it will give you all the stops and stuff, hopefully. But yeah, that's a weird, that's an interesting one, that. I can't see how that would work, if I'm being perfectly honest, but sure, whatever. We'll, we'll find out, I guess, when when that becomes a thing. Uh, step five, play your scenario. Uh, obviously, this is the, uh, I'm going to zoom in on this, because this is the information screen that you get when you start the scenario. Uh, obviously, got a new HUD here. Uh, again, I'm not really going to talk about the new HUD. I'm guessing this is a percentage, uh, throttle you've got, clearly a speedo there, um, brake pressure, what well, we've got, brake pressure, main reservoir, and brake cylinders, okay, so they, yeah, they should get that kind of stuff now, you get digital reading, I do like the digital clock though, I've got to say, I do quite like the digital clock, uh, the way that's been designed. It's a bit like one of the old NSC clocks, if you've ever seen them. They're quite quite nice. I'm guessing that's where they sort of got the idea from. I kind of think maybe they should have had several different types of display you could have. Like a dot matrix sort of display or a screen or something. You know, the option to have different displays depending on what train you're driving and what route you're driving. But it's nice. I like it. I like it. It's interesting with these two paddles either side. But, you know, it's a... Uh, it probably takes them what a while to get through, but yeah, you see we've got eight cars, that's how long the train is, that's the weight of the train, where you're starting, where you're ending, 
It doesn't actually say the time it's going to take, which is a bit of a problem. I was hoping we'd get a time. Because obviously you want to be able to know... I said this before, but um, if you select a scenario... Is it going to take you a minute? Is it going to take you 20 minutes? You want to know sort of that thing, so you can plan what you want to do. So, you know. And also this, uh, this icon here. This is a bit odd. What's that mean? There's a guy, like, is that to walk around or move your head or what? Who knows? And obviously, no idea what this would be. If you've got any suggestions of what they could be, uh, leave your comments below, I guess, because I wouldn't know. I would say that's an ammeter. Uh, that, maybe something to do with the brakes? And uh, that could be percentage load, maybe? There's a little zero and then a percent, so I'm wondering if maybe that's the weight, or sort of the percentage of your load. So you've got 50% capacity of passengers on board sort of thing. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, and then they get picture, another picture of you running down the, uh, the, the the line in the scenario, passing the talent two that we set up earlier. Um, now you're playing scenario, it's time to enjoy it. I'll put it back to the um, full size. Uh, it's time to enjoy it. You'll be greeted with a clear and concise information at upcoming journey as soon as you start. It's good that that's also generated. That's good. Uh, you don't need to worry about setting all up, all up the information and stuff. The only thing is you can't have sort of custom dialogue, I'm assuming, and say, right, uh, there is a signal failure ahead. The other thing is, what about train priorities? Can we set priorities? So, are we going to end up with, if the train... Are we, are we going to end up with a system where the train that gets there first will go first? Or is it going to work out... Are, 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 the, are the, the routes maybe going to have preset priority over each other? I don't know. I'm just sort of thinking, if you've got a freight train that crosses in front of your high-speed train, are you going to get stopped in the high-speed to let the freight go, to let the freight go in front? So... That could be an interesting one. We'll, 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 we'll have to wait and see what that does. But I kind of... There's no right answer for that one, really. Because generally, yeah, you would have your freight cross it. But... Or, sorry, you'd have your high speed go and then your freight would follow it afterwards. But... That's not... In the real world, that's not always how it works. Occasionally, you will actually get a freight train cross in front of a high speed train. So, who knows? Who knows? Uh... Uh, yeah, clear and concise information on the upcoming journey as soon as you start to do things such as weight, length of a train, uh, ensure you have everything you need to get started. So obviously this, this ain't going to be particularly useful for, uh, EMUs, because you sort of, that there are standards, you know what it's going to be, sort of thing. Um, I'll let the scenario name up there. But for something like a freight train, where you've got... One of the big American freight trains on the CSX heavy haul, where you've got lines and lines and lines of wagons. You want to know what you're actually hauling. You want to know whether you've got a thousand tons or three thousand tons or six thousand tons or you know it's it's gonna it's gonna be a very different experience driving with a thousand behind, tons behind you than six thousand tons behind you sort of thing. So that's where it's going to be more more in interesting and more useful. And, uh, yep, you also get useful information at the start of the timetable on pre-built scenarios as you play through the route journeys. Fancy something a bit different? You can turn on off the rails to allow you to drive anything anywhere. This mode will allow you to defy the laws of physics and try out an array of combinations. So if you want to run the AC4400CW on the Bakerloo line, we're not stopping you. Uh, and I want to have a quick look, because did they have off the rails mode sort of as a tick box anywhere? Because I didn't see it. Uh... Surely it would be in the naming process, no? Let's zoom in on the picture quickly. It gives you a description of the route. I can't see how you activate off the rails. Maybe it's a uh, an option somewhere else. Confirm. Unique vehicles, so you can have up to 30 vehicles in a route, in a scenario then. Okay, that, that, that answers that one. I guess that's, uh, again, console limitations. So you can't have, like, 400 trains coming in and out of Victoria. Which, actually, that's a problem. If they do a route that, a route that includes Victoria, or Clapham Junction, or uh, London Bridge, or something, it's going to look dead. If you can only put 30 trains down... It's going to look dead. 
Also with the Baker Lou line, if you want to set up an actual sort of timetabled service, I'm pretty sure there's probably more than 30 trains that run on the Baker Lou line. Or even if there's not, I can't I can't remember how many there are. I think they've got 37 units in the rush hour, don't they? Something like that. But that's more trains than you have available to you. So that's a bit of a problem in a way. I know obviously in the tunnels you can probably just sort of ignore the fact but you know it, it's it, you you've got the option to see through you can walk from one platform to another you kind of want to be able to walk through and see the train on the other platform and be able to have a look at that pulling in and through through the walkway sort of thing so you know it's not really important to have them in tunnel or if you've got a junction a point and you cross over you want another train to potentially cross over uh in front of you sort of thing so you got to be really careful how you use your services i guess um and then of course the final thing again this is a picture of the AC4400 CW at, um, ele not Elephant, sorry, uh, Harrow and Wilston. And somebody pointed out the fence. Oh, that's, that's, that's not a fence. Uh, it doesn't actually zoom in any further. Okay, so that was a completely pointless exercise anyway, zooming in any further. Yeah, we all knew that the overheads were the same, because they had, clearly had the picture of the overheads being the same, um, as the Great Western ones, really, that's really something that needed to be changed. It was desperate. That's kind of inexcusable, if I'm being perfectly honest, to use the exact same. That's just pure laziness, that. They're just cutting corners now. Because, yes, I get it's not based on the West Coast Main Line, but the West Coast Main Line runs a significant length of the Bakerloo Line. It's a core feature. It's not the route you're making, so I understand it from that point of view, but it's a core scenic feature of the Bakerloo line. So why is there not any new overhead catenary? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like I say, the, the other thing is, yes, okay, maybe you put, maybe it would cost you to mo mo a load of money to model um, some brand new catenary for usage on the, uh, the main line. But, what about when you actually do a West Coast route? When you come to do a West Coast route, you already have the assets in place. You're just cutting your costs later. You know, they could build the West Coast route assets now for the catenary, and then suddenly when they come to do Houston to, I don't know, Watford as they probably would, because it's trains in world, they've got the assets ready at their disposal that they can use immediately, sort of thing. So it kind of doesn't make a lot of sense in a way. Let's have a look at that signal. Oh, yeah, of course, it doesn't zoom in anymore. I want to have a look at that signal, though, because that looks like a main line signal to me. Again, that one also looks like a main line signal. I... No, actually, I think there might be. Yeah, no, I think these are actually network rail signals along here, so I'll let them off of that for now. I'm pretty sure it's network rail signaling all the way down to Queen's Park, and then Queen's Park's the first LU signal. I'm pretty sure this is all uh, network rail property, all this. But, yeah, going back to the fence... Why is it purple? That's the Great Western colour. This isn't Great Western Express. This is supposed to be the West Coast Main Line. It should be grey, no? How much effort would it be to change a fence from purple to grey? I I really can't imagine a reskin would cost anything near as much as a, a new asset. Uh, sort of... The, the, not modelling a fence, I understand. You know, it's just a fence. There, there, there's no need. You know, it's just a fence. Nobody really cares, let's be honest, um, at the end of the day. They can get away with not modelling a fence. But leaving it purple on the West Coast Main Line? That's just wrong. <laughs> that, there's, that, that, there's nothing right about that. You know. The other question I want to know is, are there going to be diagrams in the scenario planner for West Coast mainline traffic? So can we actually put a 377 between Harrow and Will Harrow and Wilsdon, for example, um, if we want, on the actual West Coast mainline? You know, are we going to have 377 traffic? I've never thought of that. Actually, I don't think we have a 377 with a pantograph, do we? So that's a slight problem if, um, if they want to do that. Just a slight issue. But, you know, but... I mean, with off the rails mode, you could do that anyway, because you don't need a pantograph. You can just make it as a stand-in. So we got a 377 that we could put down there. Um, obviously, you can substitute, a, get a 166 in there because yes, but you know, there's nothing better. 
You could have a HST down there also because yes. But are we going to have that option? Can we have freight diagrams, for example, that go from Harrow down to Wilsdon again and then disappear onto the North London line? Is this all going to be stuff that's there? It's all stuff that we'll find out in time. But really, it needs to be fixed and it needs to be there. So I hope that fence is fixed. I don't think them overheads are going to be fixed in this short time. I think pretty much what we're seeing, they say it's work in progress and sometimes they do change things. But I think in general, what we see in the work in progress images is actually the final product in their mind. And there is stuff that needs changing. Like, pretty drastically, let's be honest. There's some pretty basic errors in this route that I'm seeing in this picture. The catenary, the fencing. Um, I'm kind of out of ideas. But, you know, you get what I mean. There's definitely, there's definitely room for improvement in this. And I hope that they actually... That people have already said and mentioned this stuff. And they've taken feedback on it. What I do like, though, I've just noticed, is that the uh, the ballast shoulder sort of wiggling along the uh, along the edge there. So that's good. But yeah, enough about the uh, about the um, the Bakerloo line. That's the status of the um, the scenario planner. Now, again, it's not really what we wanted, but is it a good idea? Yes, I'm actually I'm actually quite liking the way that the scenario planner is being set up. I do like the concept. If they can add more to it later and make it sort of more advanced and have more be have better options that you can set up easier routes and all that, or sorry, more um, more flexibility in it. That's the one. If you're gonna have it more flexible, then that will just make it brilliant. But the, I, 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 I do like the general concept of the scenario planner. But I think I'm gonna leave that there for today. Uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I shall see you all next time. Goodbye!